What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickor Scuba Marina and we're headed out today to do a little mini investigation. We got a word that there's a possible enclosed trailer with a couple motorcycles inside of it. So we got our sonar here, we got a boatload of divers here. We're gonna go out, see if we can find it. We're gonna mark it and then drop down on it and try to confirm, see if that's what it actually is. Now if it is, we're gonna come back up, we're gonna notify the local authorities and then see what we can do to get it out. But what I wanna focus this video on is, is how we actually triangulate what we're seeing on the sonar so that we can do a very methodical and thorough search when underwater. But we gotta get up the lake here and then we'll see if we can find it. Right about now it should be coming in the camera. There it is. See it right there? Yep, we just went by it twice. middle one that's unwound, that's the one we got to follow her down. Okay. Alright guys, so we got it marked up. I don't know if you can really see back here behind us, but we got several buoys back here. Um, and basically all we did was we hit it in four different directions. We dropped a buoy, and then we're going to draw a line between the north and south buoy, the east and west buoy, and then the center of those lines where they cross, that should be the object that we're going to look for. But we're getting geared up here. We're going to send two down to confirm, come back up, let the other ones go down, and then hopefully we'll get some good footage for you. There you go. Count of three. Yeah. One, two, three. Alright guys, so we've already got the object marked. Um, as you've seen earlier, we marked it with several different buoys. We've already sent two divers down to confirm that there is actually an object there. What myself and the two other divers are doing now is just to do a more thorough investigation of exactly what the object is. As we descend down here, uh, we're just going to be taking up some of the slack out of the line here. Anytime that you're dealing with black water, you don't want any type of slack line or excess amount of line. It can cause entanglements. It can be deadly to use a diver as well, so I'm just kind of taking that up. It is going to get kind of black down here. That We don't have much sun out today. There's a lot of turbidity in the water, and the first two group or the first two divers that we sent in, they've already kind of stirred up the area a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit black, but I'll try to explain everything that we're doing and what we're actually locating and how how we do an investigation here. But once we get to the bottom, we're just going to kind of get our bearings. Now we know for a fact that the buoy is not uh, directly on the object. We know it's several feet away, uh, and we know that from two different aspects. One, we know it as we threw it in, but we also know it from the first two divers that went in. So as I get some of the slack up here, I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick navigational heading. I'm going to tell the other two divers which way we're headed, and then we're going to head out that direction. Now we're approximately about 10 to 15 feet away from where the object is actually located, but we've got a good general idea of the direction thanks to the first two divers that went in. So as we head over to the object, we're going to come up onto the front of it, uh, and we're going to start to investigate what it actually is. And like I said, we're kind of looking for an enclosed trailer uh, that supposedly has a few motorcycles on the inside of it. So as we locate the object, we're just going to do a good thorough search all the way around it to see what it is. If it's a trailer, we're going to look for a tag number, maybe a tongue, uh, things like that. And here I've actually located the object, and I'm letting the other divers know, hey, I've located it. Um, you, there you can kind of see the front of it. And I can... all. 
automatically tell this is not a trailer just from my training and experience I can tell right away this is actually a vessel this is some type of boat uh, and I happen to be at the bow of the boat here um, I'm just going to do a kind of a quick search just to see if there's any entanglement or any uh, debris or something that can cause us trouble as we swim around the vessel. Uh, as I'm looking at the gunnels here and I'm swimming around, uh, I come up to the transom. I'm also kind of looking for hull numbers to see if I can document that. Uh, of course, we can come up and we can contact wildlife or local law enforcement and get the hull numbers ran. Look and see if there's a motor here on the transom just to see if maybe uh, the boat was purposely sunk or maybe it sunk with somebody on it. Things like that is what I'm looking for here initially. And I'm just checking out over the um, totality of the condition or totality of the vessel itself uh, just to see what condition it's in. Now one thing that we notice it's actually laying on its port side and it's facing a southerly direction um, and that's going to help me later on at the surface to kind of describe how this vessel is if maybe I'm trying to explain it to another diver in the future or if I'm trying to explain it to law enforcement. There I'm actually telling him, hey, it's a boat. Uh, it's confirmed that it's a boat. It's definitely not a trailer with some motorcycles in it and things like that. So we're just looking at it again. Now we did notice that half of the vessel is actually submerged in the sealed itself. So when I was back at the stern and I located the, the outboard engine that's on it, I also noticed that half of that outboard was buried as well. So even though it's laying on its port side, only half the vessel or vessel is actually visible. Um, and here once again is the transom just directly below us there, and about two, two and a half, three foot maybe is the uh, engine. But then again, there's also the bottom of the leg. So with that being said, it tells me that it is buried in the seal. Now my next uh, step here is, is I want to mark it. I want to put some type of buoy on it so that we can go up and we can discuss it with the uh, crew on board and just see what we want to do. Do we want to leave it as a dive site? Do we want to try to raise it? Uh, do we want to try to investigate more? Maybe get try to locate the hull numbers or the vessel numbers and then of course contact local law enforcement. Uh, but our first step here of course is we're going to mark it. So I'm just pulling out my SMB. I'm going to put a little bit of air in it, shoot it to the surface, and then of course mark it so that uh, we can either relocate it or that we can just leave it there for investigative purposes. But as I shoot the buoy up to the surface, I do need to try to find a place that I can attach to. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any stern eyes or bow eyes or even cleats on the vessel. Um, I did find back at the motor mount area, there's a little clip system that I can pull the string through and, and double over itself and kind of clip to it. And that's what I'm going to hook this string up to. Um, we are going to most likely put a permanent buoy on this uh, and then of course try to pull it down underneath the water a little ways where it's not an obstruction to other boaters and that way we can relocate it for whatever purpose that, that we choose to do with this whether we leave it for a dive site or like I said raise it for the law enforcement. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach the uh, buoy to the stern here and just make sure it's uh, nice and secure. And then we can also use that line as our ascent line back to the surface. Um, and here as I clip off to it, you'll see it's a nice taut line that gives us an ascent line. Any time that you do dives like this where you're marking objects, um, we, one thing that you will see in this video is we don't really do a safety stop because we're only dealing with about 24 foot of water where they're less than say about five to six minutes. So as far as doing a safety stop, it's not really a huge concern of ours. But anytime you do work like this where you're working in black water and maybe you can't really determine how deep you are, it might be important to do a safety stop. And since we have a line attaching us to the vessel and all the way to the surface, you know, use that line. Now, we are in a spot current, so that line is going to be uh, handy for us in the event that we try to do a safety stop. But we've got it marked. We're going to head on up to the surface now. We're going to talk to the other divers on board and see what they want to do with it, see if maybe they want to go back and do a little investigation. And we may actually make another dive on this, just to let everything settle from where we've been started up, give it about 30 minutes, and then we may actually jump back in and dive it again. But we'll discuss it here at the top and decide decide exactly what it is we want to do with it. Do we want to notify local law enforcement? Do we want to keep it for ourselves? Or do we, of course, do we just want to leave it be and, and keep it as a dive site for our future divers? Alright guys, so we just got finished up. We confirmed that it wasn't a trailer full of motorcycles. It was actually uh, another vessel, another boat. 
Uh, it does have an outboard motor on it. Hopefully the footage come up good for you. But we got it marked. It was pretty good uh, as far as triangulating exactly where it was at. We sent two divers in first. They were able to ping right on it. We come back up. We switched out divers. We went down. We hooked a buoy to it just to confirm it from the surface. We ran, re ran sonar on it just to make sure that is what we saw. And then we put a permanent buoy that I've actually pulled under the water. Kind of got a bad habit here on this lake. If we leave something at the surface, it either gets damaged or stolen. But now we've got a permanent buoy. It's pulled down below the surface where no motor is going to get into it. But yet it's easy for us to find if we want to come back to relocate it to lift it or just to relocate it to actually dive on it. But I appreciate you coming on this dive with me. If you got any questions about search and recovery diving or how you dive in a lake or how you use sonar or anything like that, Put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. Guys, if you like this video, simply smash that like button for me and definitely share it as well. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.